Yes, sir. Can you guess how much food you eat in a lifetime? Scratch that. Can you guess how much food an average human being, adult, eats in their lifetime? I imagine it'd be a lot. I don't we know. Need numbers. It? This is science. A few tons, I would think. A few tons. Well, that's a good a guess. Time to be 2,000 pounds. Now, the average car weighs about 2 tons. 4,000 pounds. There you go. 50 tons of food. That's the average in that's a lifetime? That's 50 tons of food. That's a lot of McDonald's. That's, right. that's an awful lot of McDonald's. Wendy's so, is good, too. when we eat, food just doesn't drop through our digestive tract. It takes a slow journey, slow because at each stop there's certain things to do. I like to think it's like at a car wash, you know, you're at each station in the car wash, the soap, the suds, the enzymes and so on does their job. All right. Well, it takes about 30 seconds to chew food depending upon what you're eating. It takes about, about yeah. 10 seconds to swallow the food. It takes about three to four hours for the food to sit in your stomach takes about three hours for the food to do its thing in the small intestine and then it can sit in the large intestine anywhere from 18 to two, to two days, 18 hours to two days. It's a long time. But a lot of this has to do with what you're eating. You might go on vacation and eat a lot of fruit and notice that you're in the oh, bathroom a lot. Well, <laughs> I like my steak during vacation. Do you? <laughs> okay. So anyway, uh, let's yeah, start the journey. That's one point of vacation. That's just me. So the journey starts with the mouth. Talk to us about the mouth. So this obviously represents the mouth. Okay. Okay, and then your food goes into the mouth. Now, if you remember the video from before, you have both chemical and mechanical digestion occurring in the mouth. You have the teeth grinding the food, ripping it apart, making it in smaller pieces. Okay. For multiple reasons. One, to make it smaller to help um, with the chemical reactions of the saliva, increase the surface area, and also to make it smaller so that it can be swallowed. You have the tongue, which is also for mechanical digestion. It helps move things around in your mouth. Okay? It helps push it towards your teeth so that way it grinds it better. and also helps push it back towards the back of your throat when you swallow. Your sal salivary glands produce saliva um, that helps moisten the food and also begins to dissolve the, and break down the carbohydrates or sugars uh, in, that are in your mouth that are of the food. These are the salivary glands. <clears throat> these, this is your tongue, of course, and these are the muscles that control the tongue and you're chewing. And you also you have a sal salivary duct that the saliva actually goes through before it goes into the mouth. It doesn't just, you know, it's actually controlled when it goes into the mouth. So, what does saliva do, Mr. Maxwell? Well, again, saliva moistens the food, um, so it way it's easier to swallow, and also starts to break down the carbohydrates in the food. And okay, that's the chemical digestion part of the mouth. So, as we discussed with the respiratory system, it's the epiglottis, this little flap that I'm pointing to right here, in the back of your throat, that is always open, but when you close it, that's, that triggers the swallowing uh, mechanism, and this process brings the food down through the esophagus and it's a slow squeezing kind of a process. If you ever accidentally swallowed an ice cube, you know it's a slow tr uh, trip through down to the esophagus until it gets to the stomach. So right now I'm going to remove the liver and Mr. Maxwell is going to talk about uh, the stomach. Now the stomach, you have again the chemical and mechanical digestion. You can see the musculature of the stomach which is responsible for the mechanical digestion because it ha um, as the muscles contract and relax, it basically tumbles the food around inside it, breaking the um, food material down because of the hydrochloric acid and pepsin, those en digestive enzymes within the stomach. Okay, that's the chemical digestive process. And the food material gets broken down to a, a liquid material called chyme. Okay, and that liquid material um, is what moves through the digestive system. When if sometimes you're not feeling well and you know it comes up, that's actually chyme that is being released into the toilet bowl hopefully and not the carpet. Okay. Um, so that's for the mechanical and chemical digestion of the stomach. 
Okay, and then the food travels and meanders left and right as it goes through the small intestine. And this is a very important organ of digestion because I think about 90% of digestion occurs right in here, inside the a small intestine, which is a, an interesting name because it really is very long, but it's not as thick as the large intestine. Inside the small intestines are thousands of finger-like projections called villi, and these villi are where the absorption of nutrients occurs, goes into the bloodstream, and then, of course, is distributed. The nutrients are distributed throughout the whole body. Think of it like a carpet, and you have all those little parts sticking up out of the carpeting. You know, each one of those represents a villi. So things collect in your carpet. It's the same um, thing that happens. They collect in, by the villi in the small intestines, and that way, the, uh, the nutrients get absorbed through the villi into the bloodstream. So the villi really maximizes surface area, um, much more than if it, if it was just the uh, walls of the small intestine. So wrapped around the small intestine is what's called the large intestine. And as you can see, it sort of frames the small intestine. And the large intestine, or colon, some people refer to it as, the main uh, 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 purpose is to reabsorb water, and there's bacteria in there that will prepare the waste for elimination. Uh, the last part of the rectum, uh, excuse me, the last part of the large intestine is called the rectum, and this is where waste is compressed into a solid form we call feces. And then, of course, the anus is the muscular opening at the end of the rectum and uh, that releases uh, the waste. So it's almost like the large intestine provides a victory lap, if you will, for the material around the small intestine before it's eliminated. So the large intestine is the mechanical digestion as far as moving the material through peristalsis. And it's absorbing that water, any moisture that's left within that waste material. So we call the mouth, the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, the large intestine, the rectum and the anus, we call that the alimentary canal or digestive tract. But there are other organs too that are not part of the digestive tract but are very important to digestion. Uh, besides the glands in the mouth, the salivary glands, there's the pancreas that makes pancreatic juices that break down proteins. Yeah, the, and when the pancreas... The whole point um, is it creates enzymes that go into the small intestine to help with the digestive process. Okay, so that's what the pancreas is for. Food does not pass through the pancreas, but it's there to provide these digestive enzymes to help with the breaking down of the food material. And these enzymes is what speeds up the process. Uh, then, of course, there's the largest organ inside our body called the liver, and this is very important because it manufactures an important enzyme called bile, and bile is responsible for breaking down fats. And attached to the liver is a little punching bag organ called the gallbladder, and it stores uh, the bile. And then uh, we also have uh, the teeth. Mr. Maxwell, you're going to tell so us about teeth, how the teeth are specialized. You have specialized teeth for specific functions. That's why humans are designed to be omnivores, both eating meat and vegetation. You have the incisors that are meant to essentially break through material. Okay, like if you're eating a carrot, your incisors snap through that, break the, through that. Same with the, with the apple off of the other video. You have the canines, which are designed to tear. Okay, like tearing meat, those kind of things. So if you have a dog or a cat and you see them yawn, you know they're ready for eating meat because their canines are really significant, pronounced, sharp. Okay. And then we have our molars, which are designed to grind and crush food material. Okay, so our teeth are very specialized in that respect. Okay. And again, those are the different parts of the digestive system, different functions, but more importantly, understand what food passes through and the parts of the digestive system that food does not pass through but still play an integral role in digestion. And so these are questions we would like you to ponder, and we're going to be asking you the answers to this later on this unit. What are the two types of digestion? What's the advantage to having such a long digestive tract? And which of the digestive organs could you live without? How would you compensate, which means to make up for, for your loss?